the word investor uh, and entrepreneur are kind of interchanged from some of the people who reach out and, uh, about hey look i want to make an investment in new zealand uh, or i want to be an entrepreneur in new zealand and does work towards my residency now the problem with that is that you know as a layperson you will uh, you will probably interchange uh, the words entrepreneur and investor but in the parlance of uh, the immigration in new zealand uh, for us there are two very different words because we have something called the uh, investor category uh, of a visa and then we have something called an entrepreneur category of a visa so for us you know for people professionals like myself and my colleagues and the and the immigration department of new zealand who deal with this particular subject for us there are these are two distinctly uh, separate categories now for instance within the investor category so to speak are again two subcategories so there is something called investor one and investor two so investor one is where somebody has got funds of 10 million dollars or above now these funds need to be legally uh, you know owned by uh, the person who is willing to apply so that is investor one category that you need to have funds of 10 million dollars or over and if you have that kind of legally uh, earned money which you can clearly demonstrate belongs to you and was earned legitimately then you could uh, fall under the investor one category and it is a reasonably straightforward category uh, so there are not a, too many hoops you have to jump through but if you do not have 10 million dollars and you have let's say between 3 million to 9.75 million dollars uh, of investment uh, to make in new zealand and this is not to set up a business this is just to get this money and invest it into an acceptable investment in new zealand which could be uh, either government bonds and you know there are a few categories or you could invest it into shares in new zealand uh, enlisted companies and so on and so forth so there are certain ways so cat investor category one means you need to have 10 million dollars or above or investor category two means that you need to have three to nine point seven five million dollars of legally earned funds so for investor one category the pathway is reasonably simple uh, for investor category two the pathway is okay i mean it's not as simple as the uh investor one category because you know they're coming in with a higher investment so but you know both these categories are possible for people who have 10 million dollars and come under investor one or who have 3 million to 9.75 million and come under uh in uh, under the uh category investor category two of course it goes without saying that you need to have good health and character and that's like a common thing for each and every particular category uh, whether it is investor or skill or whatever so people who want to set up a business in new zealand uh will come under something called the entrepreneur category now this is not a straightforward category and this particular category will uh uh actually go to a particular uh division inside immigration new zealand which is like it's called the business uh migration uh unit uh and so you will it's a it's quite complex this particular pathway uh in fact i remember back in the day we used to have uh something called the ltbv which was the long-term business visa and people came and you know and so you'll have to pre create a um a business plan you have to show you that you have the funds for this uh you need to have a minimum of a hundred thousand uh dollars and so on and so forth but because the investment is not very high the number of things you need to do to satisfy a, a business specialist in the immigration department is much more it is quite complex and as an advisor when people come to me and ask me uh, uh to say you know i get a lot of inquiries from people saying uh, hey look i have uh about three hundred thousand dollars or four hundred thousand dollars and i would like to start a business in new zealand and uh, uh, then eventually move to residency i am a, a little uh, uh you know uh, on the back foot in trying to convince them to move forward with this entrepreneur category because number one you will not be in the uh, country when you are kind of creating these business plans you're talking to somebody like us who is based in new zealand we're working in two different time zones and you know like i said it is the entrepreneur category is quite complex as compared to the investor category where but then for the investor category you require a lot of lot of money like 
10 million for the uh, category one or three uh, to 9.75 million for category two. But when it comes to now uh, the entrepreneur category, you might have your 300, 400,000 dollars. But you know the the kind of scrutiny they will do about your business plan, about your experience, and so on and so forth. There is an English requirement and so on and so forth. It gets quite complex, and I am a little apprehensive to uh, uh, invite some of these uh, people who inquire to uh, to start the process of the entrepreneur category because I know it's going to take a long time. I know it's going to be very complex, and we will charge you a fair bit of money because a lot of our time and effort goes into it, and which is why I'm a little apprehensive. As an advisor who is brutally honest and fair and uh, you know frank and friendly always with all my people who are seeking my particular advice i would recommend that in situations like this where you have a desire uh, to set up a business in new zealand and you have three or four hundred thousand dollars of uh, investment uh, uh, to make uh, again see i don't want to use the word investment uh, and confuse you with the investigating okay if you have capital of three or four hundred thousand dollars to make and you're keen to set up a business in New Zealand. My suggestion is you first need to be present in the country on a legitimate visa, which gives you time uh, to study the uh, market here in New Zealand and uh, kind of get an understanding of what the New Zealand market is all about. Create your network. You can come and speak to your advisor on a one on one basis because now we are based in New Zealand. And how do you do that? Simple suggestion in both this particular instances which I have seen both where both uh, these gentlemen have asked me for uh, uh, helping them to uh, come to New Zealand through the entrepreneur category. The solution is simple. Both your wives also have fantastic backgrounds. So I would like to encourage you to consider uh, that your spouse comes on a master's course here into New Zealand. And in doing that, you as the uh, the husband or, or the partner will be eligible for a work visa. Now, while the, the while your wife is uh, studying, you will get a one year uh, work visa. And once she completes the course, uh, she will get a three years post study work visa. And you will also get a, a three years extension to your uh, part uh, work visa. So essentially, you have four years in New Zealand. You still have the money with you, the money that you would have paid me as your uh, advisor and for doing your entrepreneur category visa. Instead, I'm suggesting that you divert it towards, uh, you know, a master's for your wife because that will give you uh, four years of stay in New Zealand. You might even work for one year in New Zealand before you jump into business. And in that one year, you know, you might want to enter into the industry that you eventually seek to set up a business in. And after that one year of experience where you're also earning your investment back, uh, then you should be able, you'll be in a position uh, to go ahead and set up your business. And the beauty of coming to New Zealand as a partner with a work visa is that particular work visa also allows you to set up a business and be self-employed. Uh, uh, trying to explain this through emails gets very complex and it can only be done through a face-to-face -face, uh, conversation like this. I mean, yeah, sure, you're not able to uh, uh, answer back at this point, but uh, so it's important that you understand how it has to be done. So if you do not have access to 10 million and you can't be investor one, if you don't have access to 3 million and you can't be investor two, and you only have 300 or $400,000 and you want to come and set up a business in New Zealand as an entrepreneur, then I actually discourage you to do that because I think it will be a wasted uh, a waste of your time, money and effort. Instead, send your wife here for the masters. Come here knowing you'll have four years with a work visa to come study the market, work actually, earn your investment back that you've spent towards education uh, of your spouse. And then once you understand and settle in, and that's when you start your uh, business journey. So that is my very sincere advice to uh, people who would like to start a business in New Zealand. Uh, with you know hundred thousand or two hundred thousand or three hundred thousand dollars, make that investment first into the studies of your spouse, and you come along and uh, stay legitimately in New Zealand and examine the pros and cons of actually setting up a business, and then take it forward from. Only I'm apprehensive because you know two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand dollars is also a lot of money. That's your uh, hard-earned money, and I don't want you to lose it. Uh, uh, nor do we want to earn uh, that consulting money when we are 
uh, only you know 50 percent sure that you will actually end up with that entrepreneur visa instead we're giving you a better op op option of being present in the country on a legitimate work visa that also allows you to be self-employed and set up a business so hope that makes sense so instead of paying that money consulting fees to us invest that into those studies of your wife and you can come along and be here and study the market and set up your business.